Welcome back to the state of the game. This is episode five. Can't believe I've made five of these already. Thank you so much for the continued support on this series. Anyway, today's theme is future. Fretful or fruitful? Basically asking which new features will withstand the test of time, which ones may need some tweaking, and what future Fall Guys updates will do for the game's health. Here's the rundown of everything I'll be talking about in the episode, as well as timestamps for the topics. Feel free to use these timestamps to skip to what interests you the most, as always. To start off this episode, I just want to address the state of Knockout, how it started, the hotfixes that were added, and how it's holding up so far as the newest and most controversial game mode change of all time. If you want to see me talk about 10.9 in its entirety, you can watch this video, which will be the first link in the description. So let's go back to the blog post that dropped about a week before the update actually launched. The post was filled with tons of great changes like explore mode, social features, and the new rotation controller for creative. It also had a few interesting changes, tweaks to the physics and momentum that OG players are used to, and the way that the show selector, now game selector, but cycle content like LTMs. What they at do? And then we get to the most controversial game mode of all time, knockout mode and a new version of duels and squads. Game modes with only 32 players reduced from 40, three rounds reduced from five to six, and only 40 total rounds in the round pool reduced from 65. The post also stated that these round pools would be heavily supplemented by creative rounds, meaning that there would be the lowest amount of media tonic made content since the earliest versions of Legacy Fall Guys. Finally, the post informed us of a new strategy that the developers would be using to bring us new rounds. They're calling them knockout refreshes, a more frequent cycle of unity and creative rounds that will be quote, not a repeat of vaulting all to help the game feel fresher. This immediately raised red flags throughout the community. Players are frightened about what the variety might look like with only 40 total rounds, scared about the boredom that might ensue if LTMs don't come back in a timely fashion, and quite frankly nervous that the game might never play the same again. Then the day came, May 7th, 2024. The 10.9 Fall Forever update gave us one of the most brutal, heartbreaking, and deplorable core show experiences of all time. It started with the round pool, which, yeah, even looking at it now, almost makes me laugh. 40 total rounds, 17 unity, and 23 creative, with only 2 unity finals and 5 creative. For the first week of update 10.9, the core game mode just felt like a shell of itself. And I say the core game mode because explore mode was an absolutely fantastic addition. Seriously, one of the greatest things that's happened for the game post free for all, but it was not enough to take attention away from what was going on in knockout and duos and squads. So let's go through some of the biggest issues. First off, the decision was made to keep all round pools for knockout duels and squads the same, which for variety's sake is already a negative. That means that all three of these game modes play exactly the same way, and the only difference is your reliance on your teammates. Identical round pools also meant that there were issues getting solo exclusive levels that got featured in duels and squads, or team exclusive levels that were featured in solos to work properly. Let's take a look at Hoopsie Daisy for example. This is normally a team round where three teams compete against each other for a couple of minutes and the team with the lowest ring count at the end loses. This was turned into a solo hunt level in knockout. It felt like playing a worse version of Hoopsie Legends, a 10 ring requirement instead of 6, and only a 2 minute timer instead of a qualification quota in a round of 20 to 30 other players. This was almost an impossible task, leading to most of these rounds going from 24 players, sometimes down to 4 or 5 by the end. There were also issues with tail tag, leading light, and I believe airtime and duos and squads, but I didn't even get a chance to experience them before the first set of hotfixes. I don't understand the motive of making the round pool the same in all core shows, especially if it's going to make existing rounds objectively less fun and way harder to play. The second issue the core game was faced during this first week was their round and player reduction. Mediatonic's aim was to make games snappier and easier to win for all players with the reduction of rounds and players to 3 and 32 respectively. This does not work, and I kind of knew it wouldn't. Mathematically, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's think about it. You start with 32 players in round 1, and you have to weed that down to at most 20 for round 2, and then from there you need to get down to at most 10 to get a final round to start. These are extremely harsh qualification percentages, meaning that if you fall once in some of these race levels, your ass is getting sent back to the main menu. The third main issue plaguing core game modes was the creative survival rounds. Survival rounds in creative are just mediocre in comparison to their unique and polished metatonic made counterparts. Most of them are just PvP, blast ball, hexagon, tile mashups, because it's almost all you can really do effectively at this point. I heard Octopaw make a great point about what it's like to play creative survival levels in this stage of Fall Guys. In his recent video that he's playing with Stentric, he says this. 
The only ones that I really don't like are the survival rounds, but I don't think that's so much a problem with the creators, but just the limitations. You remember how races were when Creative first came out? I feel like survival is still like that at the moment. It's very basic. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely a temporary issue. He's 100% right. When you think about it, race rounds have had seven major updates for improvement. Survival rounds were just introduced in 10.8 and have only had one major improvement update. And on top of that, most of the survival levels in the current round pool didn't even use 10.9's rotation controller until future content updates allowed creators to add it retroactively. Creative survival rounds have a lot of potential, but they just don't have the tools necessary at this point to provide unique experiences. The rotation controller is obviously a great start, and I can't wait to see what they will look like in the future. Finally, the fourth and most important issue Plague knocked out during that first week of 10.9. There were only 17 Unity rounds available to play at all. Most players fell in love with the game because of the rounds that were developed by Mediatonics professionals. There is a large majority of players who want nothing more than to just play a classic set of Fall Guys rounds. With this new game mode and show selector, that was just no longer possible. To put it simply, all of these issues quickly led to overwhelming backlash for Knockout, even causing angry Redditors to spill over into the Twitter, Discord, and YouTube comments publicly berating the new game modes. It was clear that change needed to be made, and fast. Fast forward six days later, the official Twitter account tweets this, an announcement that tweaks to Knockout are being finalized and that they'd be going live within the same week. Those changes were four round shows instead of three, changing which rounds will show up as finals, and various other bug and quality of life fixes like giving us fame rewards for medals again. These first set of changes went live on May 15th. After having a few weeks to bask in those hot fixes, I can say that they were an improvement over the first week for sure. Four round shows give you much more leeway round to round, meaning you can fall a couple times in round one or two and still have a shot at making the next round in most races. I also agree with changing Blast Ball and Kraken Slam back to their final rounds, whereas on 10.9 launch day, they both played as survival rounds instead. This first set of changes also added Jump Showdown back to the round pool, raising the total rounds to 41. Lastly, a few team-based games like Basketball and Fall Ball were added to duos and squads, replacing the solos exclusive rounds that were causing issues that I mentioned earlier. Overall, really good changes. But the community as a whole was still unsatisfied though, and really wanted stricter changes for the core game modes. One of the most common complaints, and I mentioned this in my 10.9 video, is that it felt like you had no option but to play creative round. With 56% of the round pool and all three core shows being creative, it felt like the standard Fall Guys experience was long gone. And that's a very fair argument to have. If you weren't a massive fan of creative mode, this update was not at all for you. I mentioned this in my 10.9 update video as well. It felt like they changed too much far too quickly without understanding how to please both sides of the player base. There were people who liked the mix of creative made and mediatonic made rounds, However, the overwhelming and loud majority of players who just wanted to have their classic Fall Guys experience could no longer be ignored. This brings us to May 29th, 2024. Mediatonic's second and more aggressive set of changes to all three core shows. Creative content loathers, let's face it, mostly from Reddit, <laughs> finally got their wishes granted. Here are the cliff notes from the second set of Fall Guys changes. Number one, the classic game modes are back. Solo Show has returned and it has the exact same round pool as before it left in version 10.8.1. Duos and squads have had their round pools reverted as well with every creative round from Knockout removed and various team games added in favor of those solo exclusive ones. It seems like Mediatonic has ditched the same round pool mentality, but that means that classic game modes will receive less round refreshes than Knockout. Number two, Knockout has had his round pool altered heavily. These nine creative levels were removed from his round pool probably for good. Eduardo Escapades, Fall Royale, Speed Attack, Lake in the Mountains, Meow FL Royale, Lava on the Rhino, Heat and Balance, Fan Siege Rotation, and Trumpias Tromposas. These eight Unity levels have been added to the round pool. Blast Lannis, Hoopsie Legends, Perfect Match, Rollout, Some Fruit, Track Attack, Tundra Run, and Thin Ice. And the original two non mediatonic made creative maps have been re added to this solo's round pool as well Ruta and La Selva and Rotation Station. Oh, and one final thing to note Hoopsie Legends has been subbed in for Hoopsie Daisy, so there's not both of those in the round pool anymore, and that issue of having a super difficult to qualify Hoopsie Daisy is now completely gone. 
When it comes to these changes, Meditonic says their vision for Knockout has not changed, and that they'll continue to do round pool refreshes very often to keep it feeling fresh, both with Mediatonic and creator-made maps. Classic game modes will not have this level of fast-paced refreshes, but they plan to start unvaulting rounds late this summer. These changes are a direct result of the backlash that Mediatonic faced for this update. Now the good thing is that the changes were very well received, and players who aren't fans of creative made rounds are extremely happy that they don't have to play them anymore. The reiteration of classic games ensures that everyone who hops on to play the game will have something that they enjoy. The variety of game modes is back, arguably the most important thing for a game as repetitive as Fall Guys. So everything is fixed now, right? No more issues. Well, you saw the chapter title. The changes are great, a uh, result of feedback and compromise. However, However, there has been a massive overcorrection on the account of this newest game. Let's rewind a little bit. What was the main issue with Knockout again? It didn't have enough classic rounds in it to please players who prefer those rounds over creative. But we just got all three classic shows back, as they were. Yet 9 creative rounds were still removed from Knockout's round pool, and 8 Metatonic mid maps were added. But why? This seems odd, because you've already addressed the concern of players who despise creative rounds, so there was really no need to remove creative rounds from Knockout, as it's supposed to be a different experience from solos anyway. People who don't like creative aren't even going to look in Knockout's direction, and people who do like creative no longer get to have their competitive creative show, something that was a long time coming. I understand that there will still need to be a few types of Mediatonic made levels in the Knockout round pool. There are only two types of creative levels at this point, and creative final rounds have not quite reached their potential. But with the reiteration of classic shows back into the game, Knockout's round pool should now be mostly creative. Players who like creative mode and are excited about its future should have a competitive show where they can play to earn a high number of crowns, all while experiencing the variety and innovation that creative mode brings. Creative mode is a controversial topic in general, but I do believe it's the future of the game. In order for it to flourish, it needs to be given the opportunity to be experienced in a way that isn't a pain in the ass. This is why I play as explore mode so much. I won't be talking about it in depth in this episode, but it really is a godsend for the creative experience. It completely wipes the floor with digi shuffle selection, unexplored adventures, squad scramble, solo shuffle, survival shuffle, or any one round playlist that we've had in the past. Now it's time that the same is done with the competitive side of the game with creative rounds. Fall Guys is competitive game in nature, and if creative is going to reach the heights that I and so many other players know that it can, we need to see how these rounds will stack up with 32, 40, or however the hell many players you want to see running through them. Knockout is absolutely perfect for this, as not only did it give creators a new drive to make the best levels that they can, it raised the stakes and excitement for players playing them. After 8 major updates to creative, a full length all or mostly creative show finally has merit. Creative mode is only getting better, with 10.9's rotation controller and object physics and more still on the web. Obviously Knockout isn't perfect right now, but it is a step in the right direction. It will certainly go through countless iterations based on feedback that we give them, evident by the changes we just recently seen. So with that being said, here are the things that we need to see in Knockout's future to help it reach its potential. Number one, Knockout refreshes every month. In addition to keeping the game fresh, there are so many great levels in Explore Mode and so many great creators. Monthly refreshes are the only way to showcase a large number of them quickly. Number two, a version playable with duos and squads. There are a large number of people who do like the variety that Knockout brings, but unfortunately, there is no way for them to team up and be competitive together at this time. Number three, frequent creative updates that have Mediatonic made creative rounds. The blog post mentioned that the round pool would be a mix of Mediatonic made classic rounds, creator made rounds, and Mediatonic made creative rounds. I think that it's important that we get at least two new official creator rounds every update to showcase the new features and what's possible in knockout i will say in the short term though they need to absolutely nail this next knockout refresh i've seen tons of great rounds in explorer recently and with the new rotation controller creative survival levels are actually a lot more fun i also hope that they raise the amount of total rounds to 50 and give creative rounds a 70 30 split i think that alone would cool off some of the harshest complaints for knockout after this second set of changes this has been one of the most controversial months in the history of fall guys if not the most controversial controversial with everyone having their own idea of what the future of Fall Guys should look like. I understand the backlash that was given, people don't like changes to this, and this one was massive. But at its core, I do think this style of content dropping and refreshing does have merit. The devs are right, they can't just keep adding rounds to the round pool indefinitely, as each new set of new rounds would be harder to get in game than the last. But Mediatonic, with both sides of the player base satisfied with the latest set of changes for update 10.9, all that's left for you to do is build on the momentum you've created and execute moving forward. 
Something that everyone in the community can agree on is the appreciation of the communication with everyone on your official platforms. It seems like the era of radio silence is coming to an end, and if nothing else, that is a huge win for our franchise. I eagerly await the next creative update as well as the next set of refreshes. I probably don't say this enough, but thank you guys. And don't be afraid to keep swinging for the fences. Sometimes you strike out a few times before you hit a grand slam. Alright, my bad, I had to get that serious and sentimental tone out of the video. Let's move on to Fall Guys Mobile. I've mentioned this for the past three episodes now, but Fall Guys Mobile is on the way. This update makes it pretty obvious with its shorter games, simpler game selector, and smaller content files. Thanks to a survey that Epic Games sent out with Fall Guys Mobile in the title, the port is all but confirmed. I believe we're finally rounding the corner on an official announcement of Fall Guys Mobile. So just real quick, I do want to go through some of my questions, theories, and concerns around mobile and its implications on the game. So first off, this mobile port cannot flop. They have spent so much time getting the game ready for it, and if it flops, it will almost certainly spell doom for our franchise. Now, I don't think it will flop. I just want to point out how extremely important it is for this to do well. This cannot just be another option for players to play the game. This needs to maintain top 10 to 25 mobile game globally type of status for at least the next two years in order for that me to consider it successful. I'm not trying to fear monger here, but it is important. Uh, my second thing is how confident are we that Stumble Guys players will be willing to migrate over to Fall Guys? Because both games play essentially the exact same and without live events or consistent LTMs and a much different round pool to what new players may be expecting. What is truly the incentive to switch games. Now I'll be honest, Stumble Guys graphics, music, and controls are pure dog shit. But if you've played it for a long time and you have lots of cosmetics unlocked, a few graphical improvements and a couple blast balls or something is not going to be enough to move the needle for you. In my opinion, they'll have to include some sort of mobile launch offer with cosmetics, show bucks, and maybe even an event with exclusive rewards to try to get them to jump ship. This is why I mentioned it's also important for Fall Guys to get this announcement out as soon as possible and spam as many teasers as they they possibly can. This announcement needs to be big and people need enough of a chance to know about it and drive hype so that the launch can be elite. Lastly, and maybe the most important question of the three, will mobile players be in their own separate lobbies or will they be cross-play with us console and computer players? Oh, no. I will say this, it is very important for the new mobile players to have a positive experience when they play the game for the first time. And if they're playing against a PC player like me, or a PlayStation player, or Xbox, or hell, even Nintendo Switch, there's not a chance in hell that a mobile player will ever beat an experienced controller player. I hope this is something that they discuss, because this isn't a game like Among Us, where console, PC, and mobile players can just share the same lobbies. Fall Guys is a platforming game with a high level of skill involved with the controls, so mobile players will certainly always be at a disadvantage against us. And while I'm sure the elite mobile players will master the controls in a timely manner, you cannot expect the casual ones to. All that being said, Fall Guys Mobile is very important for the health of the game moving forward. Mobile gaming is the largest and most profitable part of the gaming industry, and Epic Games, our parent company, doesn't have a large piece of the pie just yet. This could be a big break for them and its success would trickle down upon us console and PC players in the name of more updates, more collaborations, and more events. Fingers crossed we get an official announcement very soon. Next up, I just want to go through the Fortnite and Fall Guys collaboration information, leaks, expectations, and clear up as much confusion as I can about what exactly it is we're looking forward to. To start, all the information we know so far can be broken into two different categories, Fall Guys and UEFN, and Fall Guys and Fortnite Battle Royale. They are not the same thing, and we have different amounts of information for both. Fall Guys and UEFN pertains to the assets, obstacles, and beans themselves being part of the Unreal Engine for Fortnite, meaning that Fortnite creators can use these tools to create an open world course for Fall Guys to play on. We have a decent idea of what to expect thanks to a teaser shown on the Fortnite creator's official Twitter account on March 20th, 2024. We know that so far, all assets will be from Season 7 or SS1 Free For All. We can see the physics will be slightly different for these beans in comparison to our game, and we can also see that these beans can swim, whereas the ones we have just stomp through the water. To be fair, they've never been asked to swim though. Fall Guys and UEFN will most likely be far more polished and a much stronger tool for creating courses in the future, but it will be nowhere near as easy to use as Fall Guys Creative. Thanks to recent information leakers were able to find from the release of Fortnite Season 5 Chapter 3, we have a release date candidate for what they're calling Fall Guys Island. June 17th is the date found in the strings, which is not too bad considering that we were originally told it would be delayed in May, but not for how long. The other side of the Fortnite collaboration is Fall Guys and Fortnite's Battle Royale, and that pertains to the courses that will be available to play inside of 
of the actual Fortnite experience. According to this leak from OnBQ, there will be Fall Guys courses available to play during the Battle Royale experience. They were added to the data layers in Fortnite Season 5 Chapter 2, and although I have no idea what the hell a data layer is, leakers seem to think that it means that this feature is rounding the corner. This leak is from HypeX via Lula World and Wenzoing, saying that you'll be able to interact with these courses mid-game and compete against other players. The winners will be heavily rewarded with gear and other kinds of things, so it looks like all those hours I spent playing Short Circuit might just come in handy. These courses will probably be tied to some type of challenges or quests that you'll have to complete, maybe for some Fall Guys cosmetics that have also been leaked. Unfortunately, we don't have any true release date candidate for this one, but I assume it will still be this summer around the same time as Fall Guys in UEFM. If you know any more information about these leaks, feel free to comment. I'll be honest, I haven't played Fortnite since about 2019, so I am definitely out of the loop. The Summer Games Fest is tomorrow on June 7th, so hopefully we get some new information pertaining to this collaboration in there. All right, as always, it's time for the rapid fire finale. First up, Fame Pass 10. I haven't talked about Fame Pass 10 at all since the new updates. So let me quickly go through the skins and its changes so we can move on. Here are all the skins available in this Fame Pass, as well as which levels you receive them at, courtesy of Fall Guys Database. This is the shortest Fame Pass we've ever had at just 70 tiers long. It has no extra shards at the end like normal, and it's also the first Fame Pass to not include any emotes as a part of the purchase. What's interesting to me is that when it was announced that Fame Pass 9 would be 300 tiers long and have shards from tier 71 to 300, some people complain that it'd be too much of a grind. But now that the fame pass is only 70 tiers long and has no extra shards, I've seen others complain that this pass is far too short and doesn't give out enough rewards. What do you think the structure of fame passes should be moving forward? Or is having them different every time something that we should just get used to? Next up, we got a little bit of a customs overhaul. Custom shows can now play a lot more unity rounds as one round solo shows, meaning that you no longer have to have any buddies online to practice finals like Roll Off, Crack and Slam, Fall Mountain, and many others. They also have far more LTMs available, meaning that streamers and other custom lobby hosts will have a much larger variety of options to choose from. Mediatonic has again listened to player feedback and the rotation controller has had significant changes to the cost of the object itself and the per attachment cost as well. It used to be 20 budget to place down and 40 budget to attach objects to it, but in the June 3rd content update, it has been reduced to 5 budget to place and 15 budget for each attachment. They've also raised the amount of placeable rotation controllers to 10, increased from 5 previously. And lastly, I plan to talk about ranked mode this episode, but we have no new information on it at this time. With the hype and news surrounding the Fortnite collaboration and Fall Guys Mobile, it's likely that ranked mode has been postponed until late summer or even into the fall. I still have tons of questions and concern about how that game mode will work with the current landscape of our game. So let me know if you'd like me to take those questions to another video. But for now, this has been State of the Game Episode 5. The future to me looks very fruitful. And in the great words of Russell Westbrook, it's all about execution. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to not miss the next episode of State of the Game. What allowed you guys to be so successful? Mm, did a good job of execution. What did you see from them defensively that allowed you to focus as much as you did on passing the rock? Oh, we did a good job executing. Is this one of the better games you can think of in your career? Good execution. Seemed like you